before I go on with this video, I just want to give a warning. I'm talking about suicide. This is a subject matter that isn't awesome for everyone, so be warned. There may be some triggers in here. Let's do this. <music> Today is a very, very special day. Today is World Suicide Prevention Day. Maybe it's a hard day for some people. Maybe it's a special day for some people. Maybe it's an awful day for some people. For me, it's a day that, that means a lot for many, many reasons, obviously. For the people out there who are aware of what I've been through as a three-time survivor of suicide, attempts. National and World Suicide Prevention Day is, is very important to me because it's an opportunity for me to point a finger, shine a light, bring attention to a subject that is kind of still spoken about in the shadows. A subject that makes people uncomfortable, a subject that people turn a blind eye to, a subject that people would rather not educate themselves on in lieu of just holding on to maybe a bit of ignorance and a bit of, of fear because it's a dark, dark subject and it's easier to just push it over here and look away than it is to maybe take that difficult look inside or look in the mirror or look at the people in your life that are closest to you and actually have to maybe admit that there's, there's something dark living inside you or inside someone you love and it's something that's very scary and something that needs to be spoken about, needs to be brought out of the dark and into the light. My story with suicide is a long one. I first started thinking about taking my life when I was 13, 14 years old. That's almost 20 years ago. I still think about it. I thought about it as, as recently as Thursday after my awful round of golf and, and this week's tour event, my brain just goes there. And I know I'm not alone in that. I know there's a lot of people in this world who unfortunately, when, when things get uncomfortable, when things hurt, our brains want to trick us into thinking the only way to, to make the pain stop, make things easier is to remove ourselves from the equation. And I thought that for many, many, many years, arguably 14 years, from 13 to 27 until I realized that it was okay to think these things, that I wasn't the only one who was thinking these things. And by acknowledging these thoughts, it, it made them a little less scary and a little less grandiose. I was able to start the process of just acknowledging them simply as thoughts. And I had these thoughts a couple days ago, but they went away because thoughts come and they go and thoughts don't define us and my thoughts of wanting to to take my life. They don't define me and, and they will never define me and they'll never win, for lack of a better word. Those thoughts will never win. They tried to win and that's what I wanna talk a little bit about. My first attempt to take my life was when I was 16 years old. I had thought about it for a few years and I had kind of joked about it, pretended in a fight with my sister when I would have been 13, 14 years old. I threatened her that I was going to kill myself and when she went up the stairs I pretended and made a grunt and that I stabbed myself and that's where my brain was at as, as a child and then when I was 16 life to me then life sucked life was really hard life hurt a lot I didn't want to be part of that anymore so I tried to take my life when I was 16 years old my sister, she found me in my attempt and we, we stopped and we got lucky and didn't talk about it, didn't tell mom and dad for some time. And we just eventually realized and, and thought and were tricked to thinking that it was a teenage phase and it would pass and it passed. I let everybody believe it passed, but it never did. I continued to think like this and hurt like this and not know what to do when things got very, very difficult. When I was 24 years old, my doctor said to me, I think you, you suffer with depression. I dismissed it because I, I was a man, I'm an athlete and I'm not weak. I can get through anything and it's just demons, tough it up, you know, shake it off, just man up. That's what I tried to do for so many years and I was really good at it. I've got a degree in theater. I was really good at pretending. 
I was really good at putting on a happy face, convincing everyone else everything was okay, when in reality, I hated who I saw in the mirror. I had no idea how to handle adversity. I had no idea how to handle heartache, how to handle strife, how to handle grief, pain, loss, any of that. I didn't, I didn't know. And then when I embarked on a career of professional golf, <laughs> That's all it is. It's heartache, it's it's stress, it's loss, it's disappointment, it's frustration. And I did not know how to cope. Year after year, in my mid-20s, it just kept snowballing and, and piling, becoming almost insurmountable. And then when I was 27 years old, I had, I had had enough. I wanted to take my life. I wanted out. I didn't want to hurt anymore. I opened up to someone. I, I talked to my doctor. We went on medication. We started doing everything you're supposed to do, but I think the reality was, for me, I was just doing this to make other people happy when I knew that I was out. I had checked out. I, I tried to take my life at 27. I tried to overdose on my medication, and in that brief, brief moment of clarity, when when I was looking in the mirror, telling the person that looked back at me all the things that were wrong with me and all the people that couldn't love me because I was unlovable, I said my, my nephew couldn't love me. And that was just so such a lie that it stopped me right in my tracks and it made me throw my medication up. And I mean, I was incredibly drunk at the time. I drank a bottle of, of gin at the time, so. We got through that, chalked it up as perseverance, survival, resiliency. We didn't really do anything about it. We didn't tell my doctor. We didn't go to the hospital. We just counted our blessings, counted our lucky stars, really, and moved on. And then it was two and a half weeks later that I went so far as to say goodbye to people. I was out. I was, I was done. I left my sister's house. My mom was there, my sister was there, my niece and nephew were there, and they tried to keep me. Just needed them to get out of my way, and I, I left. As I was driving and making those text messages and making those phone calls, I took my hands off the wheel of the car, and, and I hoped that the car would just go into that deep ditch and, and end things. In that split second again of, of survival, I grabbed the wheel, and I straightened the car only to drive to a rooftop where I knew the code, how to get on top of the building and how I was gonna jump. I went to that rooftop. I got up there and there was other people up there. And there was this, this moment where I was so ashamed of what I was doing that I didn't want other people to witness this. So I listened to the people that were trying to coerce me back into the building and to the hospital. And we went to the hospital. Yeah, I, I was hospitalized at 27 for suicide attempt. Pretty, pretty crazy to think about that that was almost six years ago. Where I was then and where I am now, and I still think about taking my life. I still think about suicide, but I don't panic anymore. Yeah, I've put in a lot of work. I've made the efforts to make my life a little bit healthier, not easier, not better, but healthier, because life is hard. Life is really hard, and all those struggles that I dealt with up until I was 27, they still exist now. I just have a little bit better understanding on how to get through them, how to not panic. I still am in debt. I'm still playing a level of professional golf that is far from where I want to be. I'm still in the same boat I was in 10 years ago. This measure of success that I hold myself to, I'm not even close to it. So for all intents and purposes, I'm a failure. And that was the thought when I was 27 that kind of drove me to the edge. And I'm in the same boat now, but I don't think I'm a failure. I'm sure I fail, I fail a lot. I missed a cut this week. I finished last this week. Like that's, that's a big failure, but I'm not a failure. The only thing I'm a failure at is trying to take my life. And I'm really glad I failed. I'm really, really glad I failed because it allowed me to realize what I was made for. I realized I was made to share this story with people to be on a stage, to be on a golf course, and tell people that pain is very, very real, but pain is something that connects us all together, and pain is something that we should be able to openly talk about. And our darkest days are not shameful. They're not embarrassing. They're something that doesn't separate us from other people. It's actually something that connects us with other people because our darkest day is probably not too dissimilar from your neighbor's darkest day or your family member's darkest day. 
life's hard. We all have to get through this life, but we have to get through it together. I realized in these last six years that I was made to be an uncle. You know, I have their birthdays here for my sister's four kids. And if I had taken my life, I wouldn't have been around to see the, the other two born. They're my motivating factor for, for everything. I want to make them so proud of their uncle. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here for those four children. And one of them just turned a year old two days ago. I wouldn't have even been around to see her born or to see her turn a year or to see her turn 10 years, 20 years, see her get married. I wouldn't have been around for any of that. And that's why I'm glad I stayed. And to anyone out there, I'm not here to tell you life will get magically easier if you stay but you have to stay. You have to stay to find out what you were made for. And you're probably gonna find out you were made for struggle, you were made for suffering, but above all, you were made for victory, you were made for survival, and you were made to be a beacon of hope and of light to the other people around you that are maybe a little bit too scared or ashamed or embarrassed to open up about their hurts. But if you can, if you can open up and say, hey, this is why I'm here. This is why I stayed. This is why I put down the pills. This is why I put down the knife. This is why I grabbed the steering wheel. This is why I backed away from the rooftop. This is why I put the gun down. You'll be able to give them hope and a reason to stay. I could ramble on about this forever because I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of what I've been through. The gross, disgusting bits of it, everything. I'm proud of my suicide story. And I'm proud that I've survived. And I'm proud that I'll continue to survive because I'm gonna continue to think about it. Things got really scary, not even a year ago, but I'm here. And I'm very proud of that. And I'll forever be proud of that. And I'm very proud of this voice I have. And as long as I have air in my lungs, I'm gonna share this story of mine because I know this story of mine is not unique. This story of mine is your story and it's your story and it's your story because you've heard just like I have and you've thought the things I've thought, but you wanna stay. You're scared to stay. It doesn't seem exciting to stay because believe me, Two days ago, it didn't seem exciting to even go and play golf the next day, but I'm glad I did. And maybe that's what I was made for. I was made to play bad golf every once in a while, and that's okay. So if you're out there and you're struggling with the thoughts of taking your life, you need to know it's not the answer, that there's help out there. And there's so many people around you that care about you and want you to stay. So please stay. Please reach out. Please listen to them. Help is so, so real. Hope is so, so real, and you have so much ahead of you. You were made for incredible things, wonderful things, beautiful things, so please stay. And if you know someone out there who needs to hear this message, share this video with them. It might not be easy. I'm not talking about the most lovey-dovey uh, rainbows and cupcake thing here, but this is something I think a lot of people need to hear, and I'm very happy to share that. So please, guys, like this video, share it. Let's convince a lot of people today on World Suicide Prevention Day that prevention is the answer. Because there's so much, there's so much life to live, and I'm living proof of that. And as my tattoo says, I'm living a story, and I will not give up. Please join me and don't give up either. Thank you guys. I'm gonna put some links of resources, websites, phone numbers you can call because if you are struggling and if you are in crisis right now and you feel like there is no one immediately around, click these links, call these phone numbers, call 911 if you need help in this very instant. There's people out there, even if you don't think anyone in your life cares, the people at these websites, at the end of these phone lines, they care. They care very, very much.